What's up guys? Welcome back to Rugged Adventures. We took a few weeks off with the deer hunt going on with modern gun season and I know, you know, hunters get all wild about people making a bunch of noise in the woods. So uh, for the last couple of weeks we didn't record any videos down here just to kind of be courteous to all the neighbors. But in that time I had some things out on order and I wanted to show you guys this because you guys know this is a pistol. This is a nice little Ruger Mark IV and 22. It's kind of got a little loud color scheme on there. You know, it's uh, it, like any other pistol. Pretty nice little deal. This is also a pistol. You know, Glock 23, very standard. Uh, you know, everyone I think has a Glock unless you're just one of those people that just doesn't like having fun, doesn't want a Glock. And then this is also a pistol. And uh, the funny thing is you guys might be like, man, that, that looks a lot like a short barrel rifle or that looks just a lot like like this gun this uh this m4 m16 type of rifle um but the thing is is that this is a pistol and the one that we have today is the palmetto state armory um 300 blackout ar pistol this has a uh, eight and a half inch barrel um and it it is generally really well put together but the thing that you got that you guys are probably wondering if you're not familiar with ar pistols is what makes this a pistol versus an AR? And really the thing that differentiates a rifle from a pistol is it's designed to be fired one-handed. So that's the, that is what makes this a pistol instead of a rifle. And that's why you can have a shorter barrel without having to go through the hassle of getting the tax stamp, the waiting period, paying the $200, and all that stuff that you gotta do with things like short barrel rifles, fully automatics, and uh, suppressors. And the thing is with this is this is not a stock. That is one of the, the, the few rules because if this were, uh, it had a stock, it had anything else on it, this would not be a pistol, it would be a short barrel rifle, and since I do not have a tax stamp on this, they, they put you in jail right away. If you uh, take and modify this so that it is designed to primarily be fired with two hands, like if you were to mount a uh, foregrip here. Right to jail, right away. If you had a stock on here instead of this pistol brace, see this is a brace. This thing this is a buffer tube here. This is your pistol brace. It is not movable like it is on this uh, this AR-15. This is a stock. It's designed to be fired from the shoulder, uh, and that it was what uh, makes this a rifle versus a pistol. And so, if you had a stock on here instead of this pistol brace, believe it or not, Jim. The nice thing about uh, pistols is that they're very short. Um, they are, you know, very versatile. You get a lot of the same benefits as having a rifle, but in certain states, uh, you can carry this loaded like a pistol, like for example, in your car or whatever, versus a rifle where you may not be able to uh, carry it uh, fully loaded and ready to go. So, you know, before we get too far into this, let's get some rounds out of this thing and then I'll tell you some more about it. 7.62 by 35. Um, these are just full metal jacket rounds. They're nothing nothing special. They're usually cheap ammo like we normally run on this channel. And we'll send a few downrange. Help if I turn my sight on. And so when we look at this thing, it's a it's a very nice firearm. It's uh, the biggest thing that I like about about this firearm, and really anything that I can get for this channel, is that uh, it's made in the USA. It has made in the USA uh, all over. It's made in uh, West uh, Columbia, South Carolina. It's made by, uh, like I said, Palmetto State Arms, which I have ordered uh, several things through, uh, you know, for the YouTube reviewer guy out there. Uh, I don't necessarily recommend them over any other, you know, a gun supplier or ammo place, but I've ordered several things through them. They've always uh, fulfilled the order very quickly, and um, this is the first thing that I've bought that appears to be, you know, completely made by them, but made in USA, made in USA. And it came with one mag, and I didn't expect it to come with any mags, but it came with this uh, Magpul 30 round 
um, magazine, and it, it you know it is four five five six by forty five, which is your typical two two three uh, NATO type of round. But um, which we're going to get to in a minute why a three hundred blackout and five five six are so closely related. Uh, and then it came you know Magpul uh, grip here, and you know everything with it seems to have a you know at least decent fit and finish for a uh, you know like five hundred fifty dollar ship to my FFL. Uh, type of gun. The only thing that I added to this, uh, you know, other than what comes with it, as you see here, is this just cheapo red dot sight, um, which uh, I'm having kind of some problems getting it, uh, getting it uh, sighted in. I need to bring a laser bore sighter out here and just get it, you know, dialed in, so I'm not shooting off ammo that's costing, you know, a dollar or so, eighty cents to a dollar ten a piece for a 300 blackout, which is one of the big downsides of the 300 blackout round. But as far as the operation of this goes, it has been uh, very, very solid. When I first got it, it it did feel like it had some uh, notchiness to the machining. If you guys can see in there, I don't know if you can. It is. It did have a little bit of notchiness on that, but once I got it cleaned, once I got it lubricated, everything works fine with it. I put probably, uh, you know, between 60 and 80 rounds through it so far. I haven't had a failure with it in any way. Not failure to feed, no jams, uh, no nothing. After going through all that, what is the 300 Blackout and what would you want to use it for? The thing is, is that the 300 Blackout is an intermediate cartridge that they, uh, that they made to work with the AR-15 platform. And when I was saying earlier about the magazine, how this is a, you know, 556 by 45 magazine, if the camera focused on that, if we have enough light here in the, uh, in the fall, it will cycle with, it'll load into a standard um, AR-15 magazine, just the, the standard 30 round mag, pretty much anything that will fit a 556 will fit a 300 blackout. It also uses the same bolt carrier group, same charging handle. The only thing that's different between uh, your typical 5.56 and the 300 Blackout is going to be the upper for the AR, as, you know, as far as the gun is concerned. As far as the bullet is concerned, it uses the same casing as a uh, 7 or as a uh, 5.56 two two three uh, casing. It is a little bit shorter because they put a much longer bullet on there. So in order for it to fit into that uh, that same magazine it is you know the, the casing has to be a little bit shorter has to hold a little bit less powder uh, and that makes it go a slower speed coming out of the barrel but the difference is is that uh, this bullet this uh, 300 blackout has a much heavier bullet so it's going to have more energy than the 556 at a slower speed but when you look at uh, the supersonic variants of these they're going to have about the same uh, terminal velocity at a reasonable range that you're probably going to be or not terminal but terminal energy at a reasonable range is going to be using this because this one traveling so much faster ends up having about the same amount of energy as this one traveling much lower the biggest thing that you need to be careful with is when you have these two cartridges in your arsenal you need to make sure that you uh, separate the two you differentiate the two you do not want this 300 blackout coming behind this uh this 556 and if it is able to jam into the chamber and fire it could cause a malfunction could cause the the gun to explode um, any amount of things can happen when the wrong size uh, round is going through a much smaller barrel than it's designed for. Now, if we compare the 300 Blackout to the uh, 762 by 39 AK round, it is a little hard to even differentiate the two, especially looking, uh, you know, head on. It's because they're the same caliber. Uh, it looks like the 300 Blackout has a little bit uh, more to the actual bullet of the other thing, and the casing for the um, for the 762 by 39 is a little bit bigger as well. So it's interchangeable with the 556 in a lot of different ways uh, and it hits a little bit harder uh, in certain um, aspects. For example, the uh, 300 Blackout has a much larger frontal area than the 556, so on your softer targets or uh, you know, at closer range, you're going to end up putting a lot more energy into that target instead of going through that target with the uh, 556. It will, however, since it has a much larger bullet and it's traveling at a much slower speed, will have uh, quite a bit more um, more drop in the ballistics will have a lot more bullet drop and that you know you're not going to be able to have the reach out and touch someone uh, thing of a 556 but where the 300 blackout really shines is with suppressors this is sort of a thing that it was designed to do the 556 when you shoot it subsonic for one you're basically taking that that really hot 
uh, 22 caliber uh, round and basically making it like a 22 long rifle if it's going under the speed of sound. With this giant bullet that's attached to the front of the 300 Blackout, you can shoot these subsonic and they're going to hit with about the same uh, terminal energy as a uh, 45 ACP. The difference being is that this has a much smaller frontal area than the 45 ACP, so you're going to end up putting all of that energy in a smaller, uh, a smaller area. In addition, subsonic uh, 556 oftentimes cannot cycle a uh, an AR-15 unless you do a lot of gas work, in which case then it is you know over gas for your typical supersonic. And so what this is great at is being able to cycle that action every time when it's shooting subsonic. And the, the fun part about this is, is I still am waiting on my Silent Scale Hybrid 46 that I've had in with the ATF now since May 9th. It's now November 28th. And, uh, you know, I'm just waiting. I did the e-file thing. They said that it would be here in, uh, you know, 100 days or so. We're way past that. So we will see where that goes. And really... Once I have this thing sighted in with, uh, you know, correctly sighted in with the uh, with the supersonics, I will probably not shoot 300 blackout out of this again, or probably out of any other gun, because if you're shooting supersonic, you may as well shoot the 5.56 that has the uh, much lower cost per round than the uh, than the 300 blackout. This you're looking at like 50 cents a round or so. You may be able to find a little bit more, a little less. I think maybe 37 is the, low, the lowest I found in a while. This is probably going to be 80 cents to uh, you know a dollar some. So if you're not getting that that suppressed awesomeness that you can get out of this, and you know this sounds like a, you know essentially a BB gun shooting. There's really no reason not to uh, not to use the 5.56 if you're going to be shooting supersonic. So the plan with this is to get a, a different upper that is you know another eight and a half inch uh, upper in 5.56 so that I can shoot this all the time you know relatively cheaply and have the uh, 300 blackout upper for when the suppressor comes in and when we can shoot it and be extraordinarily quiet with it. Guys, if uh, click the, the videos that are on the screen right now. That's going to show you all the cool stuff that we've been doing with shooting guns. Hit the subscribe button down below. If you're not yet, hit the like button. That helps me out uh, in the YouTube algorithm. I appreciate you guys watching today. I'll see you in the next